The story I am about to read is The Beach Guy. This is actually the first proper short story I ever wrote. I originally came up with the idea, I think when I was in uh, primary school, so a long time ago. I first actually wrote this on 27th April 2014. The final version of it was finished only on 22nd April 2016. Of course, I didn't work on it continuously between these points. It was more like I'd occasionally look at it and make a couple changes. I don't think it's a terribly good story, but I think it's good enough to share, and since it won't get published anywhere, I figured why not share it here. The Beach Guy Sam watched a crab bury itself in a small burst of sand. Sam wondered if the crab was buried deep enough that the gull's pecking beaks could not reach it. He supposed the crab couldn't have gone that far down in such a short span of time. Then again, it was moving very quickly. Sam stood back up and stretched, the sun shining down on him and the sand around him. The sand sparkled with the tiny broken shells strewn over it, and these shells, bones of tiny creatures, crunched beneath Sam's feet on his way back to his umbrella. Sam took refuge in its shade to enjoy the relaxing roar of the tide and the small drink he brought with him. He wondered if he would get to see an octopus at the beach, but he knew this was unrealistic. When Sam had been sitting there a while, thinking back to the fun days playing there when he'd been little and unburdened with the humdrum horrors of adult life, he felt oddly disappointed. As a child, he had played on these beaches with his cousins, who back then would always travel out here with his family for vacations. With his cousins, he had fun exploring tide pools and inventing silly stories about the small fish in them, or about the Blanket King for a game they'd invented. However, as the years went on, his cousins fell away from his family, and then his family fell away from him, the beach along with them. But the trip was not over. There would be a chance for Sam to be happy. He noticed a guy sitting in the surf. The waves lapped this person, but he appeared to be taking the ocean slaps with splendid patience. Sam wondered if that man was okay, out in the water like that. Slowly, as if the air were not air, but some kind of thick, restricting syrup, the beach guy sitting in the surf stood up and drew nearer to Sam. Oi! called the beach guy when he was close. You! Me? said Sam. Why, certainly you! The question, after all, was absurd. The only other people on the beach were far away, as tiny from this distance as the crab Sam had seen burying itself, though their shapes were more indistinct behind blurs into which the ocean was breathing. This stranger had a faux British accent and was wearing trunks over a tight blue wetsuit that left no part of his upper half to the imagination. There was something about the way in which the sun shone on this unusual beachgoer that disturbed Sam. Say, mate, what's your name? asked the beach guy, halting beside Sam's umbrella. Why do you need to know? Is it Samuel? You look like a Samuel. How did you- All right, Samuel! Come on, what what? Up you go! The beach guy pulled Sam up and guided him from the shadow of his umbrella toward the surf. The sun shone down on them, and Sam had to squint and wondered if he had enough sunscreen. Sam was becoming concerned that the beach guy was going to ruin his vacation. Where are we going? The tiny shells were crunching under their feet. I like you, Samuel, so I'd like to have some tea and crumpets. How's that sound to you? Actually, I have a drink back under my umbrella, so if you'd let go... Sam tried to free his wrist from the beach guy's grasp. However, for some reason, he was not able to, even though the beach guy's grasp did not seem especially firm. Soon the two of them were up to their knees in the surf. At first, Sam found the salty water cold, but grew accustomed to it quickly. A little further out, floating on the water's surface, was a bodyboard, on which were a pot of tea, several cups, and tiers of tea cakes resting on quality china. Take a seat, Samuel, said the beach guy, sitting down on one side of the board. The water was up to his chest. Sam hesitantly accepted the invitation. He wondered if the other beachgoers were staring at him, but none were nearby, and those in the distance seemed as though frozen in place. The beach guy poured him a cup of tea, 
but the waves splashing over and around them quickly soiled the tea and upset all the tea cakes in China. How's your tea, Samuel? Sam looked down at his cup, now full of salt water, but no tea. The beach guy did not seem to make any especial effort to close his eyes, even when the salty waves splashed over him, and so they were deeply bloodshot. It's, it's fine. So, uh, what did you want to talk about? What do you do for a living, Samuel? I, well, these days I've been moving between a few serving jobs. But I'll become an engineer. That's a good job. I'm enrolled in a program. Are you happy with your work, Samuel? I, me, I'm a professional suicider. Huh? Suicider is also a type of poison, but I'm obviously not a drink. You see, I kill myself professionally. Then how are you alive now? The splashing waves obliged Sam to occasionally pause in the middle of his sentences, but the beach guy kept talking even at the cost of swallowing seawater. Every wave caused Sam to tremble, imagining a jellyfish or small shark flinging onto his body. As a suicider, Samuel, I know the tricks of the trade. To be honest, I was hoping that I could convince you to pursue a career in the suicide field. No thanks. Sam was becoming quite uncomfortable, and not only because of the waves lapping over him. Samuel, you absolutely ought to consider seeking a career in suicide. There is no shortage of job openings. Can I go now? I'm, I'm going now. Blimey, leaving already? But you just got here. Say, Samuel, would you care to learn what brought me to Sunshine Beach today? No. Brilliant! I'm searching for the Great White Wave. The Great White Wave. Sounds fantastic. It didn't earn the name for nothing. The bloody thing killed a relative, and so we've been seeking it out for years. My goal is to commit the ultimate suicide in its foam. Not to get revenge or something? Revenge? Why would I want that? As a professional suicider, I can tell you that death is a lovely thing indeed. A death is a gift, Samuel. It is peace. It prompts gratitude, not vengeance. The tea party that the beach guy set up was now entirely destroyed. This ought to have only been somewhat annoying to Sam, but he felt acute anguish. Sam had heard about box jellyfish, which were very tiny animals whose sting was nonetheless deadly to humans. Of course, there weren't any in this part of the world, but the ocean's entire surface concealed innumerable other unpleasant animals, and any of them could be beneath the salty waves. What's wrong? Do you want to leave that much, Samuel? Yeah, I'm going now. All right, have it your way. If you ever decide you'd care to drown with me, though, you need only ring me up. Pleasure having you over. Sam hurried back out of the surf. He feared the consequence would be as bad as it was for Lot's wife, but Sam glanced back at the beach guy anyway. He appeared to be sitting as one might in one's living room, except up to his chest in the ocean, with barely a moment to breathe among the lapping waves. Sam did his best not to let this incident ruin his day at the beach. He wanted this vacation to be as nice as the ones he had years ago here, but there was certainly no sign of the beach guy back then. Or was there? He thought as he sat in his shade. He reflected that, back then, he also never sat in the shade like this, but was out playing in the sand and gathering shells. There was a year when he and his cousins collected shells, and he brought a bunch of them back home. Though these tiny bones were beautiful and whole when he'd gathered them, many had broken once he opened the bag back at home. That night, having taken a shower and put on his jammies, Sam settled down to read a book. He had been saving this book for a few months to read on this vacation, because the author was a favorite of his a few years ago, but Sam found that it was not as good as he had expected. The author might not have been as talented as Sam remembered. He set the book next to him on the couch. The hotel where Sam stayed was quite similar to the hotels in which his cousins tended to stay on the family vacations. Even its hard wooden corners were somehow soft. He could remember eating candy with them, discussing a book that author had written. They played that game involving a blanket king Sam had invented too. If only Sam could remember the rules. However, in the last few years he'd traveled here with his cousins, they'd started bickering. They became very petty and crude in their fights. Sam found this very unpleasant, and at this moment, there occurred to him the possibility that his cousins always bickered, but had hidden it from him when he was little. His cousins were studying to become engineers, last Sam was aware. One dropped out, but the other was doing fairly well. He seemed happy when Sam talked to him, but that was quite possibly because he was happy to talk, instead of contemplate combinations of chemicals. 
Recalling the beach guy, Sam approached his room's window, which commanded a view of the beach. Now the moon lit the beach and not the sun, and the tide was much higher, depositing a new layer of tiny bones to be crunched tomorrow. Was the beach guy still out there in the darkened waters, waiting for the great white wave? Maybe, but if he was, Sam could not make him out in the dark. Shame about the tea party, Sam thought. There were innumerable other secrets concealed in those waters which covered the world. The land on which we walk is the exception, poking out of the ocean that chips away at its edges. Sam woke up in the middle of the night, needing to use the toilet. The blankets were soft and warm, but he got up anyway. When he was returning to his bed, though, he screamed. There was someone standing in the corner of his room. He grabbed his cell phone and said he had nothing valuable. Even the cell phone was an outdated model, now worth less than the metal inside it. I'm not concerned about your mobile, Samuel, said the intruder. Blimey, man, it's only me from earlier today, remember? Sam recognized the intruder's faux British accent. Get the hell out of my room! The beach guy flicked on Sam's bedside lamp. Under this lone light, the bed and the two men and Sam's suitcase cast fantastic and monstrous shadows. Sam thought that the beach guy, who still wore his wetsuit, seemed more uncanny than before. At least he was dry. He smelled like salt water, though. I understand why you might be upset, Samuel, but it's very important that you listen carefully. Monsieur Octopus has recently cast a spell on the Blanket King, and as a result, your bedclothes are dangerous to touch. Stop! Good God, man! Don't get back into your bed! Didn't you hear what I just said? I'll need your help to stop Monsieur Octopus, Samuel. Even I can't do it alone. Get the hell out! Suddenly, something began beating on the closet door from the inside. What? What's going on? Careful, Samuel, the beach guy said, holding back an arm to protect Sam. It's Mosia Octopus. The closet door flew open. In the weird and dim light, the smallish and brownish octopus that oozed out seemed as much shadow as matter. This went deeper than the beach guy. Run, Samuel. I'll hold him off. But, but I don't. Go, Samuel. There's no time to argue. Slipping his shoes on near the door, Sam fled the room. The beach guy and Monsieur Octopus fought a spectacular battle behind him, harming his memories as much as each other. Sam had wanted to see an octopus, but he should have been more cautious. This was hardly the octopus he'd imagined. Even a grown man has his limits, and Sam was brought almost to tears. This cruel world had told him so much for so long. All he asked for was this opportunity to enjoy vacation like he did when he was little and life was still good. But now, that guy and that octopus, if guy and octopus they truly were, had stolen this one gift from him. Though, Sam had to admit, he might not have had any chance to begin with. He descended flights of stairs. In an emergency, elevator use was discouraged. Sam had the suspicion that these two interlopers were not new to this beach, but had always been there. Perhaps they were everywhere, but being young and naive when he visited this resort as a kid, he never noticed. Up until this time, he had hidden from them like that crab from the seagulls. Now that he knew, even his memories of childhood were unpleasant, were soiled. Would not the world let Sam keep at least some happiness? Once he had escaped from the hotel, Sam stood in the moonlight in his pajamas. All was quiet and still, save for the sound of the advancing tide in the distance. At night, this area became pitch black. Sam remembered that his uncle once saw a big cat in a forest somewhere around here. Up above, the window of his room shot open and his sheets and blankets flew out. They tackled Sam, and for a moment he was afraid they would swallow him. He grappled with them with all his strength, but, with all this madness even at the beach he once loved, wondered why he should even bother anymore. In this state of mind, all his strength was rather less than it might otherwise have been. When it seemed the spellbound blankets were about to crunch Sam's bones like his feet did the shells, they were torn off. The beach guy had saved him. He looked different in the moonlight, as if somehow more tangible. Samuel, said the beach guy, we can only defeat Monsieur Octopus together. For now, you must rest, Samuel. Death may be beautiful, but the world must be preserved too, so that people can appreciate how beautiful peace is in comparison with the tortures of living. 
the great white wave is coming, and at that time I will have to leave. But we can save the Blanket King before then, Samuel, if you and I work together. Blankets are very soft, as soft as sand, and there is good in saving them. The beach guy conveyed Sam along with him, and beneath the moonlight, the two escaped to the surf as high as it had gotten. The hotel had to be abandoned to Monsieur Octopus, at least for the time being. The next morning, the people in that hotel awoke to discover that most of their bedclothes had vanished. Quite a few people had suffered from strange and bad dreams. Some remembered a type of racket from Sam's floor the night before, but nobody was sure of the details. One woman said she saw a man rolling around in some sheets outside the hotel. Apparently, all Monsieur Octopus had left behind in Sam's room was a single smelly blanket. Sam never returned. By the next week, this dropout from a college engineering program was reported missing. The ocean swallows many things, sometimes people among them.